This is the Brave New Coin Crypto Conversation, hosted by Andy Pickering. Hi everyone, Andy Pickering here. I'm your host and welcome to the Crypto Conversation, a Brave New Coin podcast where we talk to the people building the future in the Bitcoin, blockchain and cryptocurrency space. Good news team, we have an exciting new sponsor here at the Crypto Conversation and well, they are perfectly positioned for today's changing investment environment. Because with market volatility so high and the expected returns for stocks and bonds so low, I tend to agree with the analysts at JP Morgan who have declared that alternative assets are no longer optional. And that is good news for those platforms who can provide access to the top alternative asset classes like Masterworks. Yes, Masterworks.io has solidified itself as the platform for investing in contemporary art. And Masterworks is on a mission to democratize art investing which is a 1.7 trillion asset class how do they do this well masterworks is the first platform to make it possible to purchase shares that represent an investment in multi-million dollar artworks from iconic artists such as banksy cause and basquiat all at a price point tailored to you and since 2017, Masterworks has sold a number of iconic artworks with each returning over 30% net IRR to investors. Legally, I have to follow that with past performance is no guarantee of future results. Now, if you want to get in early, just go to masterworks.art slash crypto conversations to skip their waitlist. That's masterworks.art slash crypto conversations. And you can see important regulation A disclosures at masterworks.io slash CD. And now it's on with the show. My guests today are Stephen Braverman and Kent Swig. Uh, Stephen is the CEO and I believe Kent is chairman. We're talking about Dignity Gold. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, welcome to the show, Kent and Stephen. Thank you yeah. so much. Well, to begin with, gentlemen, uh, we'll do uh, what we always do at the beginning of the show. Uh, Kent, let's start with you. If you could please uh, just introduce yourself. Love to hear just a, a very quick uh, bit of background on who you are and what you've been doing in the lead up to uh, Dignity Gold. And then Stephen will do you afterwards. Uh, Kent, hello. Okay, and hello to you. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure for us both to be here. And uh, I'll give you a little background. Uh, um, I uh, born and, uh, and spent, uh, raised in San Francisco, in California. I moved to New York in 1987, and primarily I've uh, had my business career in the real estate business, including investment uh, and development of commercial office buildings, hotels, and residential buildings as well. Um, I happen to own a lot of operating companies. Uh, Helmsley Spear is in the commercial field. Brown Harris Stevens and Halstead are in the residential field and um, have been involved with the cryptocurrency with my partner, uh, Steve Braverman, for about uh, three years now. Very nice. Thank you, Kent. Hello, Stephen. Hi there. So uh, I am a, a, a New Yorker that has switched sides of the country and moved to LA about seven years ago. I spent 30 plus years on Wall Street, uh, mostly in the in the trading area. I ran Knight Capital Group. Before it was Knight Capital Group, it was called Knight Trimark Securities. And, uh, you know, my background is mostly from Wall Street. Um, I got into cryptocurrency in 2017, uh, right before, you know, the, the big moves in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum and uh, fell in love and really became a, uh, a Bitcoin maximalist. And, uh, you know, Kent and I decided that, that we had an opportunity to uh, do something really well in the space and professionally and a little bit different than what was happening in the space, you know, prior to us getting involved. Awesome. Okay. Well, look. Let's let's talk about that then, uh, Stephen. So so keep going. How how do you and uh, Kent uh, know each other? And um, and what was your um, I guess what was your your big idea? What did what did you want to do uh, in the crypto space? Well, I, I I've 
known of Kent for a very long time. Um, he it just happens to be married to a friend of mine from high school. And I worked with um, her brother for many years on Wall Street. So we've been at functions together. And uh, I think it was around 2018 that we started talking about uh, getting involved in cryptocurrencies together. And, uh, you know, the idea really um, came from a, a, a project that had been out there that, that didn't do so well. But uh, it was the, the idea really came um, because cryptocurrencies, the way they were, um, it, they're all networks, but they're traded like public companies. And I just didn't, I, I wasn't able to really grasp where the value came from. And I just felt that uh, having a cryptocurrency that actually had some real backing behind it, like gold, uh, was a really fabulous idea because at, at least you know what you're getting when you're purchasing, you know, uh, something that has real backing and asset backing. Um, I guess, it, you know, Andy, if I could... purchasing other cryptocurrencies, they're, they're networks. So they, they may have value, but exactly what do the owners of the token receive? Now, obviously, in the last five years, you know, things have changed. And with DeFi and so on, um, that there are certain tokens out there that people actually receive, um, you know, something. But it's, it's really hard to predict what's going to happen in the future. I, I like Bitcoin because it seems to be, have become a real store of value. Um, but it's also just a network technology. So there's, you know, there's, there's nothing really behind it other than the technology. And I'm not saying that there's anything bad about it. I love it. I love Bitcoin. Yes. One of the things that, that Steve and I brought is, is a new way of looking at a new industry, right? So the industry is, is establishing itself and growing and clearly a multi-trillion dollar industry right now being the cryptocurrency market. I think what Steve and I have done um, and I'll go with specifics in a moment, but on a general basis is we have tried to demystify the industry and we've tried to bring stability and predictability and transparency to the industry as well. So we have formed Dignity Gold, um, which has 3 billion tokens in our first token, um, which is called DIG, uh, AU, DIG AU, AU being the... Uh, periodic table element for gold. And what we've done is rather unique in the industry. Um, number one, we're United States based. We're both of us United States citizens, we both pay United States taxes, and we're very comfortable being US citizens and our company is based in the United States. Secondly, we felt that there's a need for transparency in the operation. So um, going on our webpage of dignitygold.com, one sees all our attorneys. One sees our accountants, one sees our investment banker, one will see our board of advisors um, and our other professionals. So we have brought a, a professionalism to this, um, to this marketplace. We have offices in New York City. We have a you know, CFO, controllers, we have accountants, et cetera, just like other typical uh, uh, industries. The next thing that we, we did is that we felt it important to have real backing so we have in the United States, uh, we have seven uh, mines that we have UCC uh, control over, and we have two mines that we own outright with no debt. Those mines that we own have over $200 billion of precious metals in them and gold, silver, platinum, and other rare earth minerals. And we have pledged $6 billion of real solid gold assets backing our dignity uh, point. And, um, and again, and then we took the step even further. And that is that we brought, we went to the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission in the United States, and we voluntarily filed last year to be one of the first tokens that actually have SEC filing. And then because of that, we brought in another element, which is demystifying and, 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 and taking away some of the, uh, the secrecy of 
what what the cryptocurrency world has done. And that is done where you if you get your token, the Lord forbid you lose your password, just like if you lose your stock certificate with IBM. What does IBM do? They reissue a new stock certificate. So with us, because everything is registered, um, if you lose your password, we'll burn those tokens and we will reissue those tokens to you. So it doesn't take geniuses to to keep everything together where we're dealing with the average human being and investor who is still bright, but but doesn't have to memorize a 21 word algorithm in effect to uh, to come out and, and, and keep their token alive. But who's that? So I think we brought a new element of that. And the last piece is that we are we've linked ourselves with an investment fund that we're putting together that will actually offer dividends to the token holders that own our token. So I, I think what we've done is blended the best of the public enterprise of Wall Street with the new and, and huge industry of cryptocurrency. So, yeah, well, thank you, Kent. It sounds like you guys are actually... Um yeah, there's a there's a there's a blending of uh, the crypto asset space, uh, the the traditional Wall Street space, uh, but also very much uh, the precious metals industry, particularly gold. So, as I understand, it, uh, Dignity Gold you describe as a blockchain development company that is creating uh, securities tokens, uh, which just means SEC compliant, really, doesn't it? In the US, uh, to establish investment opportunities into uh, the U.S. precious metals, mining and minerals sector. So it's quite, quite a lot to, to take in, um, but quite a, quite a fascinating uh, concept, gentlemen. It, it is you. indeed. And, and, and um, I, you know, I, I think that th there's an enormous opportunity in the crypto business. Um, and, and I think that there's a lot of mythic things that, on there and and un and un understood uh, information. So um, bringing really good, um, strong investment um, um, product to the table that's verifiable and transparent really, I think, is the calling for where this industry needs to go. So if you look at at people who are making an initial investment. You look at some of the family offices that that would love to have a cryptocurrency investment, but just can't quite get over the fact of not under, not having the information that they do in their typical investments, whether it's stock and bond portfolio. We're, we're bridging that gap and gaining entry and allowing entry, I should say, for major investors like family offices and private developers to be able to stand and see how the, how uh, cryptocurrency can, can be a great investment for them. Got it. All right. Well, let's talk about uh, the DIG AU. D I G A U. Is that how we say it? So that is, uh, is I think that's the first token that you guys have issued. So, um, Stephen, do you want to just talk to um, what the DIG AU token is, uh, what it represents, what is the investment thesis? Well, it's it's very simple. We have pledged six billion dollars of the gold that we have, the you know the assets that we have um, in the ground and entailings, and we also have already um, put a substantial investment in a, a mill and, and mining facility in Lincoln County, Nevada, which is you know pretty much ready to to start operations. And um, what the token really is, it's it, it's we're guaranteeing people that. We're, we have these assets and they are backing the token. So it's it's a very simple thesis. It's when you buy a Dignity Gold, you're buying you know a, a, an actual mining operation that has real assets coming out of the ground. And, and well, let's and hear about more. Yeah. And, and one of the interesting parts of why we ha have decided to do this is because it, it, it's a, it's in the gold industry there are the big boys which are you know barrick and newmont and you know they have large operations and then you know you have a bunch of mid-size operations that have a very difficult time 
getting funded, but they do have a significant amount of precious metals and rare earths in the ground. So I think that part of what we want to try and accomplish is to be able to um, be a fundraising source for those middle sized companies to be able to actually get into business and start operating. And that's, you know, one of the areas that we expect to be able to grow in because, you know, we want to be able to finance or fund some of these mid-sized companies, have them pledge their assets to us and, you know, and, and have it increase the backing of our token over time. Got it. And we, do, and we do expect to do this with silver, platinum, palladium, and many other, other rare earths um, that we actually get from the mining operations. And Kent, uh, tell me with the the di with the DIG AU uh, token, then. Uh, so you guys talk about how this is backed by I think you said um, what six billion worth of uh, gold in in these mines uh, uh, that um, that you guys. Would, I'd love to hear more about the those those particular mines. Where are they? And also. Uh, what does the DIG AU token does it actually does it track the price of gold or is it tracking uh, the value of these particular mines? How does that work? It's six billion dollars of of gold which we have put forth, which equates to two dollars per token um, of the three billion tokens that we have for the DIG AU token. Got it. Um, if gold goes down, then we will be pledging more gold because we're pledging an amount of gold, not just a fixed dollar amount. So it's, it, 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 it mimics, if you will, a stable coin, but it's certainly not just a stable coin and because we have all the upside going forward um, of a regular token in, in the crypto industry. Plus, we've also put forth, so we've, got, we, we, we've, we've put a, a, a floor, if you will, on, on valuation by, by putting forth real hard fixed assets in gold against this token. So that should stabilize the token at a certain value. The so upside, of course, yeah. is, is, is enhanced because you've got regular upside of the, of the cryptocurrency industry, plus the fact that we've got a corresponding investment fund that is being put together that will be able to provide dividends for people. So it, it again, it's combining the best of, of public enterprise with what Wall Street under regulation with the best of the cryptocurrency world. Uh, now, where the mines are specifically is that we, we have two that we own directly, um, roughly over $214 billion of, of precious metals there, and those are in Nevada. Uh, and then there are seven other mines that we have a uniform commercial code uh, filing on, which they call UCC, uh, and those are located in uh, Arizona and Nevada and uh, in Colorado. So we have two sets of, of, of mines that back our goal. The, the, the value of them is over a half billion dollars, um, uh, pardon me, $500 million, half a trillion dollars of precious metals. That, that we have. So as Steve said, we'll be, we're looking forward to issuing a new token, which would be uh, silver backed and, and moving forward. And, and I think it's an interesting industry for us to be in, not only just the crypto industry, and it's not only investment industry, but what we're doing is we're providing a, a mechanism for liquidity and monetization of the mining industry, because Many people have mines around and they don't have the liquidity or, or monetization ability to be able to start harvesting all this wonderful uh, precious metals. So we're, we're providing a, a mechanism to be able to do that. And I'd, I'd love to get your guys' thoughts on, I suppose, the, the precious metals markets uh, in general, certainly gold, also, you know, silver, palladium, uh, what, whatever else um, uh, you guys track and, and are interested in, you know, because traditionally you'll be very aware that, you know, in in the more um, hardcore crypto circles, I suppose, um, there's a kind of, there's almost a generational divide, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, gold and precious metals are seen as, um, you know, reasonably safe um, traditional investments. You know, used as a perhaps a store of value. But if you're looking for the 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 more um, 
I don't know, <laughs> aggressive appreciation, then people are going to go, well, they'll start with Bitcoin and then they'll gradually go further out into the uh, the altcoin uh, and the risk curve just gets steeper the further out into uh, the altcoins uh, you go. How do you guys think about uh, all this? Well, you've, you've said it perfectly. You described it exactly perfectly. And what we've done is we've blended the two together. So for instance, um, we're in clearly an inflationary period of time in the world, right? So what do people do as a hedge against inflation? Typically they buy hard fixed assets, whether it's precious metals, real estate, art, precious stones, diamonds, jewels, etc. Those Those are good hedges against inflation. Um, and what we've done is we've provided a hedge against inflation because we have actual precious metal backing, in our case, in the first token, $6 billion of, of gold, which is a wonderful hedge against inflation. And yet at the same time, you've got an unlimited upside with the cryptocurrency that's available. So we have blended both you know, a secure, safe investment with upside potential. So you can, you can reap some of the benefits of inflation if it occurs because of the valuation of crypto, and at the same time, hedge yourself against it because you've got precious metals. It's a very unique program of investment. And best of all, it's made clear and transparent because of the way we've structured ourselves. That's quite a neat trick if you guys can pull it off. You know, the, as you say, you're essentially protecting the downside by providing uh, that hard asset backed floor, uh, but getting uh, a potential uh, much greater exposure uh, to the upside as uh, the crypto market uh, continues Andy, to Andy, evolve. Let me just say, let me say one thing. It's, we, it's, if, if we could have pulled it, it has happened. We <laughs> own and control the mines in Nevada. $214 yeah. billion dollars owned, controlled, deeds of trust, no debt. The 3 billion tokens are issued and out there to investors. Um, and, and so it has happened. The only thing that is pending right now is the process of going through the SEC, which we have filed, and we're in the process of going through that approval process. But, other, but otherwise, the tokens are out. They've been issued. The gold is real. The backing has, ha has happened, and it's all verified. So whether it's accepted well into the marketplace or not, that, that's an if. But in terms of, of achieving what we've said we've done, we actually have achieved this. Got it. So let's talk about the, I suppose, the the target market for this then. So I imagine uh, the token is available on, on various exchanges and you did talk about, um, you know, family offices and, and so on. Uh, so I'd love to understand uh, exactly who the target is and who is able to participate in, in this. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, the, 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 simply put, we believe that we are an institutional product um i think that, that that there is a significant amount of interest in for institutions to be able to invest in the precious metal sector without having to um pay the, the the high premiums of the you know the futures markets and without having to worry about delivery and insurance on the actual precious metals because all of that happens on our end, so the the investor gets reaps the rewards of the increase in price with our tokens, um, without having any of the expenses of actually you know holding on to actual gold. I mean, if if if, if a, a BlackRock wanted to buy a billion dollars worth of gold, they'd have to insure it. They'd have to move it to their vaults. Uh, you know, it's it, it's an expensive process. So in order to uh, do that without that expense, they can just own our token. So that's number one. Um, I think that it is also good for the retail investor because there are so many people that don't know how to purchase precious metals and don't know, you know how to store them or what the best thing to do is. And now it's very simply they can buy it on the blockchain and, and keep it in their private wallet and they have their exposure to the precious metal market. So I think we have a lot of, of, of potential um, investment groups, you know, for, for our tokens. You mentioned one thing, Andy, the generational um, um, 
review of, of, of sort of cryptocurrency versus old world investing. And, and I think that we've been able to blend both. So if you if you look at if you look at multi generational family wealth uh, in America and around the world, for that matter, and typically you find that a lot of of this wealth um, is transferring from one generation to another. Uh, younger generations tend to be a little more crypto friendly and interested because it's an up and coming thing. And then you have some older generations that just don't understand how it works. And they don't understand, you know, the valuations of them. And and both both generations, the younger ones and the old ones, are accurate. There, it's hard to, to understand and review what the what valuations of some of these cryptocurrencies are. And at the same time, the young generation, see, you know, feel they don't see the stumbling block as much because they're a little bit more aggressive. So we've put forth the benefit, the, the the blending of both. We are very friendly investment a very friendly investment vehicle so and understandable so for the younger generation looking to go into the crypto world and trying to get their next older generation to come in and understand it um instead of of, of, have, of this mystery and if you will you know like a deer caught in headlights like bambi right you get you just freeze and you don't know what to do we're 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 a a, a, a company that is a, that is allowing and nurturing and and encouraging older generations to come in because it's identifiable and it's verifiable and and, and it's uh, and made easy to understand and and this huge scary feeling of gee if I ever lose my 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 password I'm out of all of my investments that has been eliminated right if you lose your bank account. You know, password at Chase Manhattan Bank. They don't keep your money. <laughs> you get a new password through verification, just like us. If you if if a password, Lord forbid, is lost, we re-verify you and we get you your token and give you a new password. And if you could demystify that and take away these these elements that that make it for people who make people feel that, that they're uncomfortable to make the investment, why then you've opened up an entire new world of investment opportunity for people um, because you, you, you're starting to speak in their language. Yeah, absolutely. I very much understand that uh, solving that custody solution for people, because let's face it, most people uh, don't necessarily want that headache of um, storing their own private keys and being responsible for their assets just in case uh, something goes wrong. It is good to have uh, that backup. But I mean, you know, the, the, the this kind of institutional... Um, access or adoption to crypto as an asset class it really is starting to happen um i mean people have obviously been talking about the institutions are coming that has been a meme really since 2017 but i and, and while we still don't have that um you know that elusive uh, spot based um etf in in the us seems to be perhaps that's just a matter of time now but i was interested to see i think fidelity announced this week that they're going to enable um, financial advisors to add uh, Bitcoin to those fidelity uh, managed funds and, and portfolios in the US sometime uh, later this year. You know, that that alone seems like a pretty positive signal for the for the wider crypto market, gentlemen. I, I agree. Yeah, the, it, since I, I mean, in, in 2017, institutions were really not involved. There were some like, you know, Mike Novogratz, you know, he he was one of the first to really start you know, playing in the crypto space. Um, but it, it, it's really morphed over the last three or four years and institutions are definitely involved and they're getting more and more involved. And as you can see with the price of Bitcoin, you know, going from three thousand dollars to, you know, sixty nine thousand dollars last year. Um, it's obvious that that's happening. And, I, I, you know, I think it's going to continue to happen in the future. And, uh, you know, I believe that uh, eventually the, this, the, the crypto space will be um, on par with the stock market and the bond market and, and other, you know, major investment spaces. And obviously regulation is coming. Um <laughs> You know, yes. and we wanted to be on the forefront of that, which is why we are filing, you know, with the SEC 
because you know we we took a regulation forward approach and that is something that we we want to happen we asked for it to happen so that's you know that's why uh it's taken us a very long time to get this process going and you know we brought in the best accounting firms and investment banks to help us along the way and you know and and we've done it that that's that that is where we're at right now got it all right. Well, let's start to finish off, gentlemen. What what is next um, for for you guys at Dignity Gold? L- love to hear anything, um, any hints about what is next in uh, the product pipeline, uh, the roadmap. Uh, what are you working on? What boxes do you need to tick? I'm sure there's um, there's a, a, a lot going on at all times. Two or three well, things. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Ken, you could go. You could start. No, you go. You, you, I'll go, and then you go. Well, one is um, we've got a new token, and um, that that will be out. Uh, will be a silver token, and 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 followed by others. Uh, and secondly, I think it, it's maximizing the value of the Dig AU token now, which is, <coughs> pardon me, exploring more um, um, platforms uh, and exchanges to be able to access our our token and to be able to purchase our token. And then also it's, it's finishing our filing with, we filed with the SEC, but finishing the approval process with the SEC. And what's the timeline on that expected to be? I know it's like, how long is a piece of string, but. You know, I'm going to get six months potentially, I, you know, just throwing it out there and I, and I can't speak on, on a specific basis that, but, but our, our, we're, you know, we're in the process of, of going through all of that with them right now and, 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 and the furtherance of the filing uh, process. So, um, you know, it, it depends on the government, of course, and what their response is, but we're, we're hoping within the next six months. Right. So as Kent mentioned, I mean, we're, we're, we're definitely excited about uh, creating more tokens based on the uh, assets that we have. And silver is definitely going to be our next token. And then we'll, you know, we'll make some decisions later on whether we want to do, you know, platinum, palladium, rare earths. You know, it, it really depends on the actual mining. And once we begin that process, um, then, uh, you know, we'll see what we're actually getting out of the ground. And, and then we'll make a determination on what tokens we want to do next. Um, one fun thing that, that we have done that you may have seen is we have sponsored uh, several NASCAR teams. And uh, right now the, our NASCAR is the Dignity Gold uh, NASCAR is racing in Brazil. And it, we actually sponsored the, the event. So it's the Dignity Gold GT Sp- Sprint Series in Brazil. Um, Tarso Marquez is our driver in brazil and um actually he's he's running the team in brazil he hasn't driven in brazil he's going to be when when we come to the u.s in july uh tarso marquez is going to be our driver uh in the 79 dignity gold car so that's something that's uh fun for us I love that. And that's actually been one of the the big narratives really of the last 12 months. It's been incredible to see the rise of these, um, I guess, you know, mainstream uh, crypto brand sponsorships of mainstream sporting events. So you've seen you know, like the all these big exchanges um, and like Crypto.com and FTX and so on, kind of uh, branding um, sports stadiums in the US. The Formula One is now, has got a lot of uh, crypto sponsorship and, uh, and NASCAR as well. So it's, you really are seeing uh, crypto fast uh, breaking into the mainstream, aren't we? Absolutely. Right. And, and what we've done is, you know, we've taken, you know, Kent says this a lot in our in our meetings is best business practices uh, from the United States, from the way companies, public companies run their companies. Uh, So that's what we're trying to portray into the crypto space is really, you know, we're many cryptos are not even companies. They're just networks and tokens. Totally. You don't even know who you're dealing with. We are telling everybody we are a company, you know us, we're transparent and you can find us. (laughs) And um, 
we're using best business practices and, you know, sponsorships is just one of those things that is really good for us to get our name out there for people to really see that we exist and, and learn more about us. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, uh, let's uh, close out the show. Uh, just final thoughts from, from both of you. And also just please uh, tell the listeners where they should go uh, to find out more about what you guys are building at Dignity Gold and, and how they can just stay abreast with developments. Okay, uh, so right now we are traded on two uh, exchanges, BitGlobal and CryptoSX. Um Unfortunately, until we are finished with our filings, uh, U.S. citizens are not allowed to purchase our token. So they're just going to have to wait until we're done with the filings. And, you know, hopefully they can, we'll... They can purchase and won't be able to trade them. They can purchase and hold. Well, they can purchase through our private placement. Right. But they cannot exactly. purchase on the exchange. Correct, correct. But any anyone outside of the U.S. is able to purchase and trade the Dig AU token on Crypto SX and Bit Global. All right, and the website main website, of course, is just dignitygold. dot uh, com. Uh, well, thank you, gentlemen. This has been excellent. I have very much enjoyed uh, learning about Dignity Gold and uh, what you guys. Are doing i do wish you uh the very best of luck um yeah i'll be fascinated to see how all this plays out all the best and bye for now thank all right you thank much. you andy appreciate you having us all right there you go that was kent and steve or steven kent and steve i think uh from dignity gold uh yeah really interesting model that those guys have got going on yes yeah, slightly uh, a different perspective than uh, what we usually have here on the crypto conversation so very much enjoyed that hope you did too uh listeners thanks for listening uh, that was today's show this was the crypto conversation for brave and new kind